Hello, in this recording we're going to talk through an example of linear regression using the TI Inspire calculator. Um, if you notice on the right hand side here, I've entered in all of the solutions just so that I don't have to take the time to do that. And also so that you have a model of uh, what would be expected of students in terms of explanations for each of these questions. In this example, we're looking at uh, the birth rate per 1,000 people in the U.S. since the year 1920. So the, the data are coded here. Um, students will need to be able to interpret that and know that uh, when it says year 10, that really means the year 1930. Um, if we start this problem, the first question is going to ask us, ask us to construct a scatter plot. Um, once we get beyond learning what regression is, Many, many students are probably going to skip the scatter plot step and just do the regression. And that's okay after they understand that regression is fitting a line to the points that are plotted in the scatter plot. Um, before we do anything on the calculator ever, we need to make sure that the settings are going to give us three decimal places. So we're going to go to settings on the home screen document settings and we want this box here where it says display digits to say fix four or fix five or anything higher than three uh, we don't want it to say any of the floats so make sure it says fix four and then we go down let's see we go down and we're going to need to click on make default and it's going to ask us if we want that to be the default setting for any open documents and Scratchpad, and we're going to click OK. On the regular calculators that aren't on the computer, there are two options for settings. There's graphs and geometry, and then there's uh, general settings. And you're going to want to make sure the graphs and geometry settings are set to fix for. So once we've done that, we're going to click on a new document. So I'm going to select one. Uh, I don't want to save anything that was in here before. And I'm going to create a list and spreadsheet page. And that's where I'm going to enter my table of values here. So, so far, I'm just entering the data that we have. And I'm going to need to label the columns. Um, when I teach this the first time, I usually have students enter the descriptive titles so that they can keep straight what the numbers are representing and what's happening in the regression. When students become a little bit more adept at using regression, uh, if they're going to put an X here and a Y here, that's okay. But initially, I want them to understand the meaning that goes along with the numbers. So I have my data entered, and now I'm going to want to create the scatter plot. So I'm going to click on Menu, and we're going to go to the Data option, and we're going to click on Quick Graph. And if you look so far, this doesn't look like what we would expect it to look like. We've got dots down here, but it doesn't look like uh, what it should with the x-axis representing year and the y-axis representing the birth rate. So I'm going to need to hover over here click on it and change it to year so that the calculator knows that year is the independent variable. And I'm going to hover over here, click and tell the calculator that birth rate is the dependent variable. And I've got my scatter plot here. Um, at this point too, I probably don't want to see these two things on the same page. I want to get a good clear picture of what's happening. So I'm going to click on doc, page layout, and I want to ungroup these two and it splits it into uh, page one here is the data page two is the scatter plot. So I can uh, talk a lot about this scatter plot with students when I'm doing the instruction part of it but I'm not actually going to be able to use it to do very much in terms of the analysis here. So I'm going to go back to my data page and uh, question three, after we interpret and, and make sure students understand what year 40 is in the table, question three is asking us for the line of best fit that models the data and define the variables. I skipped defining the variables here, it looks like. Um, 
So what we're going to do is click somewhere in the table, click Menu. I'm going to go to Statistics, Stat Calculations, and if you notice there's a whole list of regressions that we could choose. We want to choose one of these two linear regressions, and since students are most comfortable with slope-intercept form at this time, we're going to want to choose MX plus B instead of what they would see in a statistics class, which is A plus BX. I'm going to choose that. I have to tell the calculator again what my independent and dependent variables are. So I'm going to click and select the data that's in the year column for the X list. I'm going to select the data that's in the birth rate column for the Y list. And then right here, this part is telling the calculator where to save the regression equation. So if I'm thinking function notation, this is going to be F1 of X, where I'm saving the regression equation. And if we look, we don't have to enter anything else in here. This down here is telling us where it's going to put the data in my spreadsheet so I can see what the equation is. This would be, become important later on if you wanted to do regression with two different data sets at one time. In order to not erase the second data set, you would need to change this value here so that it shows up later. For now, this is all set and ready to go. When I click Enter, the linear regression shows up here in the spreadsheet. Again, it's telling the students that the equation takes the form mx plus b. And then we have our values m, uh, if you notice I already wrote this down, uh, and b is right here. And then the other thing that we're going to use for linear regression is the r value, that's the correlation coefficient. We will not get into the r squared value at all with students, just the r value. Um, that's down here on question number 8, so we will need that eventually. You don't need any, any R squared or R values for any type of regression besides linear regression. It's only meaningful for linear regression. Um, so students should be able to write the equation just from pressing those buttons in the calculator and having the calculator report to them what the slope and y-intercept are. Uh, we're also asking them in this question to interpret some of these values. So this is review from Algebra 1, what they would have learned um, as far as what uh, the different parts of a linear function represent. And then when we get to question 6 where we need to evaluate f of 80, um, here this is where it gets back to the calculator steps and we want them to use the calculator to do the heavy lifting here. So lots of students will try um, as much as they can, okay, they're, they're very good at recognizing that f of 80 means that the x needs to be 80. They'll want to take their equation that they wrote down in step number 3 and substitute 80 in for x. And that's good, but we lose precision because this is a rounded or truncated version of the full equation. If you notice, if I click on the regression here, it's not really negative 0.094. It goes on and on and on. Um, so what we want students to recognize is that when they have the calculator do the heavy lifting, they're going to get a more precise answer. So in order to do that, I'm going to add another page. So control doc to add a page. It can be a calculator page. And the nice thing about the Inspire is they can type in function notation just as they see it. The only difference is they have to remember that they stored the function in F1, so it needs to say F1 of 80. When they hit enter, the calculator does the calculation for them, uh, and they can answer very quickly and easily and work on their interpretation. Question 7 is very similar, where we want the calculator to do the heavy lifting for them. Um, this part, though, we're going to want them to recognize that when they're given a y value, that they're going to need to use the graph to graph both the regression equation and y equals 20 and find the intersection. So they're using the intersection method for solving. So they're going to add a graphs page. When they add a graphs page, if you just scroll up right down here where you see where you're going to enter the functions, remember we stored the regression equation in F1, so it's already there in its unrounded form, so it's the most precise version available. If I hit enter, the calculator is going to graph that for me. I can hit tab and I can enter the 20 for the second y value. And then students, of course, are going to need help recognizing that the reason they're not seeing this is because the window is not appropriate for the problem. So we're going to go to Menu, Window Zoom. 
window settings and I would want to make sure students understand that when they have a problem with a data table they can use the data table to help them figure out what the window should be. So because the data table goes from 10 to 70 um, it's reasonable to go from 0 to 80 in my window on my calculator and be able to see hopefully everything I need to see. For the Y min um, I know for sure I'm going to want 20 to be a value that I can see once I set my Y min and my, my Y max. But I can also look in here, it looks like the lowest value is around 15.9. So maybe I'll choose 14 for my Y min. And when I look for my Y max, the biggest it goes to is 24.1. So I'm going to choose 25 and click OK. And then I see the two parts of this that I want to see. From here we're going to go to menu, analyze graph, and we want to find the intersection. The calculator is instructing me to find a lower bound, so I'm going to click here for the lower bound, scroll to the right until I see the word intersection, and click enter again. Um, once the students have set up their calculator to fix four on the graphs and geometry part, they're going to get a more precise answer here. For some reason the teacher software on the computer is not giving me that option. So if I just scroll on here, um, I can click on attributes and select a more precise version and it's going to extend this for me. Students will not have to do that. As long as they set fix for, they should see enough uh, digits here that they can put the answer rounded or truncated to three decimal places and be okay. And um, that is about it for the calculator steps for linear regression.